Welcome back to the third and last video of my mini series here about some external hard drives that I bought. While in the first video I freed up my Raspberry Pi to use it in a second video as a NAS with these things, well, that didn't really work out that well because, well, it was very, very slow. So what I now decided to do was to shuck these drives and put them into my actual NAS. Yeah, that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to teach you a bit about what shucking even is, why people are doing it, and then we are going to do it ourselves and upgrade the storage of my NAS quite considerably. So there are lots of different uh, external hard drives that actually come with 3.5 inch desktop drives in them that you can just install in any old computer or server or what have you. So let's also take a look at why you would actually want to do that. So now we're here on GuideSiles, which is a European price comparison website. And here I have now searched for the WD MyBook drives, which are the ones that I bought personally. And this is pretty cool because this shows you just like all the different products that are out there with the, the lowest current price. As you can see with these, uh, the currently lowest price here is the 8 terabyte version, which is also the version that I got. That's pretty cheap. You have to consider this is, well, first in Euro and then also including all the like sales taxes and VAT and however you want to call that, so that's uh, the 19% that we have to pay here. So a few things to note here are, well, first, uh, as you can see, 8 terabytes are the cheapest, and then 6 terabytes, and then you get 10 terabytes, and then 12, and 14, and then 4, and then 3. So yeah, basically, uh, there is like this center sweet spot, which seems to be around 8 terabytes here for this particular model, because, well, the lower you get, well, uh, I mean, making a drive, there's a lot more that goes into making a hard drive than just capacity, right? Like you need a controller, you need like the, the circuitry, you need like a motor, you need like a housing and stuff like that. And you need that no matter how many how many terabytes are in there. So yeah, you are going to pay a lot more for for the cheaper drives. It's actually quite a lot more if you go down to like three terabytes. Like it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense there to be completely honest. And yeah, well the higher capacity drives need some more expensive technology, so they are also going to be a little bit more expensive. I mean yeah, you also have to kind of calculate how much each single drive space costs you in the end because well that's space and space is also kind of money uh but let's remember that there are, uh, for eight terabytes you, you pay around 17 euros per terabyte now let's go over to the normal internal hard drives where actually the four terabyte hard drives is the cheapest one and that already costs 10 euros more per terabyte which is friggin insane uh some things to note here is that the 12 terabyte ones are pretty cheap here actually comparatively speaking the 8 terabyte is like way, way further down here for the internal drives and for the external drives. Um, but yeah, that's just something that I, that I've seen here now. So now we have covered why people are buying these drives. Well, because they're a lot cheaper. And with that, uh, now done. Let's take a look at actually shocking these things. So basically, this entire thing is just uh, one thing like that that slides out of the center of the thing. And yeah, that's the bottom of this thing. So what we have to do is just uh, kind of loosen up those clips and then we can uh, kind of push it out. So let's do that, I guess. So for getting in there, uh, I'm using just this Swiss army knife that I have. So just apply some pressure and then just kind of cut in there and loosen up those clips. If you uh, plan on maybe returning them at some point, or claiming their warranty or whatever, then yeah, it's probably better to use something that's not a knife and not to scratch up the plastic down there too much. So let's decide with the serial number, that's actually usually the hardest one. But there with a bit of pressure and some force and the knife, it's not too difficult. So now it's already going down on all sides, so that might have already been enough. But I think we still need... Still need that setup here, I think. Yeah, that sounded a lot better already. And now just a bit of a push and then this thing comes out. And then you just have that piece basically right like that. So as you can see, basically all the electronics are in this little compartment here now. And there are two screws up top and two screws on the bottom. Mm. 
So they have this like weird type here, but for every weird uh, screw, there's also a weird screwdriver. One like that, and that should work like a charm. There they go. Okay, now as you can see, this is just a standard SATA hard drive. Um, but there's this little board down here, which is still secured by this one little uh, screw there. Well, not anymore. And now this thing just comes out easily like that. Now we're left with just a standard hard drive. Okay, so these are now the insides of my server. I already started cleaning the outside a little bit, but the inside is still uh, very dusty. So that's one of the first things that I have to fix. And then obviously mounting the new hard drives. As you can see there up there are two more slots for these hard drive cages to fit in, which I've already ordered and which are already there luckily. So here are six SSDs. I'm hoping that I can move them also somewhere else. At least four of them and then down there are the other four hard drives. Let's see how this goes. This looks so much cleaner without all the cables on there. Maybe you should keep it that way. Okay, now it's kind of getting a little bit more clean. This down there was crazy. Uh, whatever, I have removed the uh, hard drive cage. No, the five and a quarter inch cages here for optical disk drives which was a bit of a pain i had to take up the entire top of the thing the entire front of the thing but now it's gone and now i can put in two additional hard drives up there and now all the three expansion cards are back in there so this is the uh, first hpa that i had and that's up there the second with a makeshift pci express bracket uh, from a video card, but it's not a video card, so there's that. And a 10 gig network card up there. So these have these uh, special mini SAS HD connectors, however they are called. They are pretty cool because in each connector you can uh, hook four hard drives or four SATA data connections to with the right cable, but they have the right cables, so that's kind of nice. Okay, now everything is back in here and mounted nicely. As you can see, the new 8TB drives on the bottom, then two SSDs for VM stuff, and the existing four hard drives, and then in a slightly weird space, uh, the existing four SSDs. This is a little bit more stable than it looks like, I think. Let's see if this uh, actually works like that, though. Okay, now it's moment of truth time. Now I'm going to turn on the power supply again. Didn't blow up yet, that's a good sign. Um, yeah, the top panel isn't on right now, but I can still turn it on. Okay, so now the interesting thing is whether or not these drives down here have turned on. And it looks like they are not vibrating actually, so they are still off. Okay, though, let's turn this thing back off. Okay, so the reason for that is because there is... Actually, let me show you this a little bit differently. Okay, now you have a bit of a different uh, hard drive, but that doesn't really matter. So this right here is the SATA power connector, and the first three pins here are for 3.3 volts, and normal hard drives don't need that. But these special uh, white drives, white labels, they actually uh, use these 3.3 volt uh, things for reset so that means when they receive power over these first three pins they're not going to turn on this is apparently like a data center level feature because that allows you to uh, spin these drives up not all at once but staggered which is kind of nice when you have uh, i don't know 40 50 drives in a single enclosure but i'm not prepared to deal with that so what we're going to do is we're just going to tape over these things okay now as you can see i have glued over the third uh, pin here. Let's hope that this works. Okay, now I've taped over all of these drives. So let's see if this now works. Hmm. 
Hmm. They are definitely doing something now. Oh wow, yep. <laughs> you can clearly hear that there are now a few more drives in here working. So let's just plug everything in and uh, yeah, well, see if they actually show up. Okay, now it's powered on again. Uh, my network shares are reachable again and it's real moment of truth time now, I guess. Let's head over to uh, storage here. Okay. And then we... Uh, import volume, no, volume manager. Yeah, a new one. <gasps> Four drives. Oh yeah, there are my drives, I guess. Let's just call this WD four times a terabyte. Yeah, like that down there I called it also SSD. So HD four by a terabyte. All my disks in are not RAID C2, RAID. Yeah, RAID C. Capacity 21 terabytes. That looks a little bit better already. And then add volume. Okay. Okay, now I'm already uh, in the editing process and I realized that uh, OBS at this point somehow stopped recording. Uh, yeah, anyways, as you can see, uh, I'm already moving data over to it. Right now it's fairly slow because I'm copying a, l yeah, a, a lot of small files basically. But here's this network share now, 20.4 terabytes in Windows. And it already has 2.26 uh, terabytes on it, like uh, on a Raspberry Pi that would have taken me probably like a week or something like that. And yeah, now because this is a bit faster than on the Pi, I can also move a bit more over than I originally thought. So here I moved over, for example, my two uh, huge backup. Uh, backup files uh, which were uh, full disk images from my PC before I reinstalled it the last time and also a bunch of YouTube stuff uh, very my old archives essentially that are still moving over still 3.2 terabytes to go but yeah overall with the speed I'm very happy as you can see we're now actually boosting up to around 200 megabytes here copying a larger file uh, yeah And uh, overall, I can say that I'm pretty happy with it so far. I definitely do not regret the decision of buying external hard drives, and I will do it again if I have to. And on that note, thank you guys for watching. See you on the next videos. Until then, have a great time. See you all then. Bye bye.